Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Sunday, January 29th and the energies within the day adds up and reduce to the number one vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So when it comes to the energies within this day, it's easy to feel like everybody is looking at me when no one's really looking at you. It's that kind of vibe. Because a lot of focus is on the I am. I think of how the sun rolls over the day and the sun deals with the individual, our identity. And I think of the brightness of the sun and how it feels like standing in a spotlight type of energy. I think of how the day adds up to the number one energy and the number one is the I am. The number one energy talks about being first. It's competitive. It's egoic. It could be aggressive. The day is the 29th and the two plus nine is 11. And the number 11 could be turbulent. And this turbulence is coming from the amplified masculine energy when you see two number ones repeated. And this energy can be so intense because introspection and feminine energy is restricted or it's rejected because we don't reduce master numbers. So this is a day where we could find ourselves bombarded with ideas, too much ideas. And the two brings a nurturing, sensitive aspect. The number nine is cooperative like the number two but not always because it wants to and i feel like both energies is not necessarily that they want to be cooperative but they see that there is more to gain from cooperation than say rebelling or rocking the boat so when i think of the number 11 aspect i think of say it's like aggressive lots of ideas but at the same time not wanting to rock the boat so i i i get a person feeling stuck within themselves I think of, say, when a person gets angry, but they are afraid to show that anger or get excited, but they're afraid to show the excitement. It's almost like fear of judgment. It's like, do I look silly to be this excited? Do I look silly to be this happy? Do I look silly to look, be this sad? I just get this feeling of, say, always looking out to see, like, how am I doing? Am I OK? Do I look silly? Is it okay to act this way? Is it okay to be that way? So is this always looking out feeling to kind of check to see like, you know, how should I be doing? How am I doing? That's a lot of what I'm getting from the energies within the day. I like that the moon, the moon is being positively aspected by Mercury. So the moon positively aspected by Mercury, this tells me that the mind and the inner world is in accord and the mind and the inner world being on the same accord is super important because the mind is in a place of responsibility and responsibility, stability through following traditional ways of doing things. And the moon is in a place of comfort and familiarity, but at the same time, freedom. So the mind is focused on practical things, just as the inner world is reflecting on practical things, but at the same time, a need for freedom. The moon is also positively aspecting Neptune and Pisces. So this brings me to that whole dreamy nature. So the inner world is reflecting on freedom, pleasure, comfort, but at the same time, it's daydreaming. So when it comes to the energies within this day, we could find ourselves also wanting to say escape into the things that bring pleasure, the things that bring comfort. This is also a day 
where you can find yourself like wrapped up on your couch and just binging your favorite movies, but movies from the past, movies from your childhood or things from the past or things from your childhood that brings a sense of comfort. The moon is being squared by Saturn and Saturn is in Aquarius and the moon squaring Saturn in Aquarius. This is where the inner world doesn't really want to be bothered with restrictions or responsibility or responsible for anything or anyone else. I think of say with the moon in Aquarius energy, I think of say me having jobs in the past and the job was so predictable and familiar to where it didn't require thinking. It didn't require much effort. I think of say being in the salon and doing a certain style. And because I've done it so many times, it's like, it didn't require much thinking. So it's like if a person sat in the chair and they didn't have a bunch of questions to ask, or they didn't have a lot to talk about. And I could just do the basic, how you been, how's it going, blah, 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 you know, melt the ice to make the person feel comfortable. I get to zone off within myself and just do the routine. So that's what I'm getting from this day. It's like zoning off within ourselves and just doing some kind of routine. And, you know, whenever I would come across people who I can have like real good conversations with, then I would choose to have a conversation opposed to zoning off. But then there are also those days where I just feel like I want to zone off and not really get too deep into anything. And that's what I'm feeling for the day because with the energies within the day, emphasis is focused on the self. It's like, how am I doing? How am I showing up? And at the same time, wanting to start something new or the idea of starting something new, having a bunch of ideas, but not knowing what to do with them because you might not trust that you're capable of making anything of the ideas or taking them to the next level is some of the things that's coming up. But of course, with Mercury and Capricorn and the moon positively aspecting Mercury and Capricorn, there's the, there's this need to play it safe when it comes to these ideas, when it comes to these new beginnings, play it safe, but at the same time, seek freedom in the process of these ideas. It's like the possibilities when it comes to say being innovative and free is something that is coming up, but at the same time, wanting to play things safe. And of course, as you know, we have to step out of our comfort zone and do things that we've never done to create things that we've never had. When it comes to the spirit animal associated with the day, I look at the whale and how the whale brings me to the importance of emotional stability. I look at how big the whale is and how the whale is associated with the water energy and how the water deals with our emotions. And also to I look at, say, the darkness when it comes to, say, at the bottom of the water and the whale rising higher. So to me, this is getting to the bottom of our emotions, how we feel when it comes to certain things, how we deal with our emotions. And when it comes to, say, the energies within the day, I feel like this is a perfect day to get to the bottom of our insecurities and how the way we choose to see things holds us back from getting started. So it's like we have a bunch of great ideas, but like not trusting or believing ourselves, believing in ourselves will stop us from ever getting started. So when I look at the will energy as a spirit animal, I think of getting to the root of feelings and using those feelings to understand thought process. That's something that I do. I use my feelings to trail the thought processes. So it's like, I'll wake up and it's like, okay, why do I feel this way? And I'll recognize how I'm feeling. And then from that feeling, I'll trace it back to a thought process or a belief or something that's going on in my mind that's creating that feeling that needs to be addressed. So when I look at the will energy, I think about that. I think about observing an emotion and then following it to a thought process that needs some kind of resolution. And in return, that will set you free. Because for me, I remember me doing that and then coming up with affirmation and affirmation like I allow myself to be free. And I'll say that affirmation daily, but I won't just say it. Like when I'm at home, I'll say it. I remember I would get up every day and I would say it for like 30 days almost with a, with a few others. But then whenever I would go out, I would observe myself in the 
in the presence of others and make sure that I'm allowing myself to be free. I'll think about old ways, how I would restrict myself and realize how I'm not doing it anymore. And I would celebrate that. So to me, this is a day where that way of doing and being can be beneficial. The card associated with the day is another emotional card, and it's the two of cups in the upright position. The two of cups could talk about two people becoming one, the start of a friendship, relationship, connection. It could talk about putting a creative endeavor in motion. When I look at the energies within this day, to me, it's almost like matching up with different parts of yourself. And I think of, say, like me coming to terms with certain shadow aspects of myself. And instead of feeling shame about that side of myself and rejecting it, instead I find ways to incorporate it. I find ways to bring it into my world. I remember from this book called How to Receive or How to Receive, I think. I know I have it in my book list, but that book, I love how it had this shadow work part of it. And it taught you how to integrate your shadow self. So normally we'll have our shadow self hidden somewhere outside of the main home. But this book teaches you how to bring it inside and make it instead of having it hidden off somewhere else, let it have a room within the house. And to me, that's so much more powerful. That's way powerful opposed to say trying to hide it and act like it's not there. Because when you try to hide something and act like it's not there, it has more power and control over you opposed to when you have it within your space living amongst you, you're aware of it. And instead you're able to channel that energy into other things to do other things because there's an energy behind that shadow aspect. And at one point that shadow aspect was a form of protection, protecting and guiding us from something. That's how it developed. So instead of say, I don't need you anymore because I'm bigger now, which that won't do anything because it's a part of us, instead repurpose it. So when it comes to say the energies within the card, the two of cups, to me, this is like us becoming one with certain aspects of ourselves that we might be ashamed of or afraid of or we might overlook. So it's like we marry that aspect of ourselves. We repurpose it. We give it a new job. It's like a company getting sold. And it's like, instead of getting rid of all the workers, it's like, okay, what kind of position can I give you opposed to say, you know, getting rid of you completely? Cause you'll never get rid of it completely. And instead you'll make an enemy out of, enemy out of it. And then it pops up when you least expect it and just create problems that you don't want. You don't want those problems. You guys, such a pleasure sharing this message with you as usual. If you would like to book a natal chart or a tarot card reading or check me out on Patreon, the links for that is in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.